Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the grand finals of the MYM Nations Cup number three. We're going to watch Ukraine on the Sentinel side playing against USA in this grand finals. Uh, USA coming from the winner's bracket, so they're ahead 1-0 to zero in this best of five matchup. Of course, I'm Cinder and Shout casting for MYM TV. And uh, yeah, as we always do according to a tradition in these uh, Nations Cup tournament games, uh, we have the national anthems of the teams played. So um, Ukraine on the Sentinel side, so we'll have the Ukrainian national anthem playing up first. Uh, and then we will go for the American one. We've got art style captaining for Ukraine on the Sentinel side as said, and on the USA side we've got Captain Fear. Uh, this tournament plays with the unbanned mode, which means that all the heroes are available in the pool of this 71B version. Uh, so as you guys can see we get some uh, unusual bands because we get bands like Phoenix and Wisp um, But that is simply they are available for ban and pick because of this unban mode So uh, that is just how it goes Anyway, Fear randomized the first pick so uh, he will be the first one at banning and picking And uh, the Phoenix and Wisp have been removed as said And uh, we will go straight in to see what Fear gets off as his next ban Probably doesn't want to use too much extra time on his second ban already um, but yeah, it's gonna be a Pugna, so you see he just used one extra second on that one and Artstyle pretty much only used one second on his second ban, which was the Nerubian Weaver uh, he got rid of there. Ukraine kinda struggled against a, a Nerubian Weaver of Croatia yesterday on their way to this grand, grand final in the loser bracket final against Croatia. They played against Lacoste's Nerubian Weaver, uh, who actually was in about, I think he had 16 0 7 at one point in that game, but the Ukrainians still came out victorious uh, based on an incredible team fight combo and a couple of Ginzus to lock down that Weaver in the end. Uh, that was what they needed to uh, win that game eventually. Um, Fear is up with the next ban, of course. As said, he's uh, he's going to be the first picker as well, so he needs to really consider what to get rid of now to get the best possible trade in this pick ban pool. Um, he, it looks like he is really considering his options right now. Uh, what we've seen from USA early on in this tournament is that they love to play the Morphling. Uh, they like to play global power team fight with uh, Spectre as well as AA, Earthshaker, Enigma. Uh, all those team fight heroes are. Uh, USA key heroes, so we'll see which of those they choose to pick up. Uh, they're going to ban the Shadow Demon, and immediate response from Artstyle was that Ancient Apparition, and uh, that means that uh, well, we've got the Ukrainian anthem down, so uh, we're going to go with the US. I'm just going to make sure that the stream is live, of course, guys, so I'll just have a brief check with the chat, and uh, it looks like everything is working just fine, judging from you guys' comments, so I believe it's up and running. Uh, we've got a first pick coming out of USA here, which is the Invoker for Fear picked here. Uh, generally just a powerful hero in this version. A very versatile hero, can do all sorts of things with those invokes, so uh, we'll see how that comes to use for, for the USA squad. On the Ukrainian side we've picked up Thrall, uh, picked by art style here, and, and the clockwork as well, so uh, very, very powerful heroes coming out here from the start. Uh, Thrall was one of the heroes that Ukraine used yesterday against Croatia it's with great success. This kinetic field and the static storm, um, he simply pretty much rolled over some of the team fights with that combo um, and yeah that is that is what the Ukrainians are aiming for here a good engage with the clockwork to set off the fight with that hookshot cog and then on top of that cog you can fire that kinetic field as well as static storm and the target is just going to be completely ripped together with any allies that get caught in that storm as well uh, USA are going to respond by picking up the Visage here, that's one of the heroes they've played a lot as well, and the Earthshaker here, so there's the big teamfight hero for the USA. Uh, worth noting as well is when they played yesterday against Croatia, they like playing with the Undying as well. Um, playing some sort of a, a pushing strategy with Undying as well as Leshrac, so we'll see if USA try to pull that off in one of their matches as well. Um, and yeah, as I've already introduced, this is a best of five finals. Uh, USA are ahead 1-0 to zero because they're coming from the winner's bracket and actually we'll have a brief look at that while uh, Artstyle is while the second band phase is going after Artstyle picked up the Lich here uh, so let's just look at the brackets right here uh, to see how the teams actually reach this final we've got in the in the upper bracket here we've got USA going the entire way USA's first victory in the upper bracket was actually a 2-0 against Ukraine so uh, Ukraine definitely have to uh, have a score to settle here uh, then USA took down Russia 2-0, to zero, and uh, then eventually took down Croatia 2-1, to one, which was the match we saw yesterday. 
Um, and then in the lower bracket, we've got Ukraine beating Romania 2-0, uh, Serbia 2-0, Denmark 2-1, and uh, Croatia 2-0. Yesterday is their final match on their way to this grand final. Um, and yes, as we usually do as well, while the bans are ticking now anyway, we should have a look at what the uh, Goals of Gamers bets, usually a good indicator of the common popular belief, if we could say that, the, who the people of, uh, of Goals of Gamers.net find to be the favorites. And um, by the looks of it here, it is a Ukrainian uh, advantage here. Even though USA are ahead 1-0, to zero, the majority of the votes is still on Ukraine, about 60-40%. to 40%. And uh, we will see if this actually reflects the real winning chances. I'm not sure of this. USA have been very strong in this tournament, only losing a single game. Ukraine have lost several. Uh, but of course, people will, uh, a lot of votes will be given to Ukraine based on the fact that this is the full Navi team. One of the European top teams at the moment is uh, representing Cro uh, Ukraine here because there's no limit on a uh, number of players from the same team in this MYM Nations Cup. So... Uh, Ukraine are taking the advantage of this by filling up a team with Navi. Uh, bans have come off since we tabbed out. We've got Windrunner removed by Fear and we've got Razor removed by Artstar. And I believe we should put some music on now that the national anthems have played. Um, and Fear will need to come up with his fifth ban and really needs to consider what, what Artstar cannot get for Ukraine right now. Uh, looks like the setup that Ukraine are going for right now is a very team fight heavy setup, getting Lich as well as Thrall with that Chain Frost, the Frost Armor. Uh, and then they've got the AoE combo Massacre coming out of, uh, of Thrall together with the Clockwork Engage. So our uh, question is if Fia has to be worried about a specific team fight here over here on Ukraine's side, or if he's rather worried about a specific uh, carry. But it is going to be a Venomancer ban actually coming out of Fia, so that was a little bit of team fight there. He got rid of that Poison Nova, as well as the um, Venomous Gale. Uh, Arstyle is going to ban Morphling, and Fia was immediately picking up that Scylla Bear, so... Uh, there is the little bit of push that we know that the USA like to play as well. Got their hands on that Scylla Bear now and uh, we will see how that one works out. In terms of synergy with the team, he can really go in front and tank, allowing Invoker to get a lot of spells off, as well as the Fissure coming on in from the side from that Earthshaker should really enable Invoker to pull off a powerful combo. And uh, we'll see what Ukraine's response is to this. Of course, as said, they have some powerful team fight. They might go for something uh, rather right-clickish to uh, bring down this Scylla Bear Spirit Bear, who we know is a big problem. But once you bring it down, Scylla Bear is like half the threat he was with that bear. And uh, it is going to be a Vengeful Spirit coming out of Captain Art Style over from the Sentinel side. So um, getting that Miner's Armor, getting the Nether Swap, and uh, of course the Magic Missile for that engaging stun. And uh, yeah, he's got pretty good team fight potential here with that swapping around. And there it is, the Undying I was talking about. It's going to be USA's final pick here. So what a pushing power they've got now with Undying, Scylla Bear, and a good amount of team fight here. Uh, it's going to be very hard for Ukraine to deal with. But they do have a final pick to uh, find out what they're going to do about this. Could pick a, uh, a dedicated counter pusher. Could pick a dedicated pusher as well to uh, keep USA under pressure so that whenever USA try to push a lane, they have one other lane to worry about. And of course, the first hero that comes to mind is Broodmother. Um, but by the looks of it, the, the hero setup that, uh, that the Ukrainian side has got right now is really much based on a solo clockwork, solo thrall, and then probably a trial lane with Lich, Venge, Carry, or Lich, Venge, uh, Strong, uh, Melee, Power Hero. And it is indeed going to be a carry. It's going to be a sniper coming out of Ukraine. So it's been a little while since we've seen this hero in competitive play, actually. Uh, but now we're going to see Ukraine play. So the lineups are now complete, and uh, we'll go over who plays what for both sides. Uh, the U USA team has already picked up their hero, so we're going to go for those first. We've got Captain Fear playing the Undying. Uh, he played that the two games yesterday that they picked Undying against Croatia as well. And we've got Powernet playing Earthshaker. That's interesting to see him playing that one. We've got Lua playing Visage, as usual when they get that hero, it's Lua's. We've got Bulbasaur playing the Invoker, and finally Demon. Who else would be playing that Scylla Bear for Team USA? Uh, usually has the role of playing the Scylla Bear in his, uh, in his standard team, MYM. On the uh, Ukraine side, slash Navi side, we've got Captain Art Style playing the Lich. And we've got Ormazd, also known as Ahura, A-X-Y-P-A. -A. Uh, most people should know him as from, uh, from Europe who are not familiar with the Cyrillic. We're going to write that on the screen right there. Uh, that is uh, Ahura is uh, Ormazd here. And then we've got uh, Sniper played by Dendi. Uh, we've got 3-3-3, who is Goblin, is going to be playing the Thrall. And finally, uh, Chvost will be playing that Clockwork Goblin up solo top. He usually takes on that Clockwork Goblin for the Ukrainians, so uh, 
very, very predictable uh, heroes coming out of the Sentinel side. Uh, predictable roles, I should say, who plays what. And uh, Dendi's making a little bit fun of the, uh, of the USA team, saying Russian strategies by Demon. Uh, but of course they know that the USA team isn't there because they've got the clockwork spamming out rockets to give vision. And uh, yep, they could give, get vision down there any second when they want. So it uh, not, doesn't look like they're too worried about that Roshan. Anyway, the interesting lane to be watching right in this game is probably going to be the bottom lane. We've got a try against try down here. We've got Venge Lich Sniper hanging around against Visage Shaker on dying. And this is a powerful lane for the USA squad. They've got that hardcore Visage nuke coupled up with Decay. And uh, we know Decay is an AoE skill that deals damage and steals strength. So against the trial lane, if the heroes are positioned bad, he can uh, actually steal uh, strength from three heroes. And uh, then we've got Earthshaker, who is uh, like the uh, archetype of, the, of a trial lane hero with that fissure, blocking off the path, stunning several targets, and really making life hard for the other side. Looks like the Ukrainians are going to get the first initial harass off, though, and now they're going to go for Lua's vi uh, Visage. Might be a bad decision, though. He is getting those stacks up on his nuke. He's going to blast that off on Ahura, and uh, yeah, Ahura takes a lot of damage there. A little bit of um, exchanging of blows here, but not too much is going to come out of it for either side. Got a Tango up on uh, on the Sentinel side as well as the Scourge. Ward comes out for Ahura here, getting the Vision out on the lane, making sure that they don't get caught off of guard, and the Visage has already spotted Ahura, chasing him off there, forcing him to use another Tango and uh, ending his clarity uh, potion effect as well. Fia is uh, pretty much alone on the lane right now against Dendi actually, who is um, yeah sniper against Undying. Sniper can put off quite a bit of harassment on this Undying with the ranged against melee advantage. We see Dendi has also skilled the uh, headshot as well as shrapnel, so he's not going for the additional range for starters. He's getting the two other skills, Visage again, and Vengeful Spirit fighting a little bit against Lua out here. A little bit of exchanging of blows again. The uh, the Ring of Basilis is already finished on uh, on Fear here, should give the USA boys a good amount of mana regen as well as armor when they want to trigger that on the lane. Fisher comes in from power on it, not going to follow through though, so uh, that's going to be all for now, unless Lua can get in and get some damage done here, which he will try to, gets a couple of hits in, and uh, the Ukrainians are retreating from the side. Going to have a look at the other side lanes, how it's going right now. This top lane should be very, very good for Demon, playing that Scylla Bear against Clockwork. A melee hero against a Spirit Bear, as well as the real Scylla, is a very, very tough challenge. And uh, looks like uh, Vost is doing a pretty good job at it, though, as Demon resummons his bear here. He's level 3, so it's up to level 2. Uh, middle, Thrall against Invoker, looks like they're doing pretty even. Both of them have... Uh, actually, we've got all the regen of Goblin used, but in comes a bottle there on that Raccoon, uh, moving that one in there. Back to bottom. Undying is pressuring uh, the Dendi Sniper a little bit. Not too much is going to come out of it, though. He's just using that Decay to uh, stack up his own HP while uh, draining Dendi's here. You see Dendi's strength is down to 15, while the Undying's is up to 28. And that is just the power of Decay, stealing all this strength from the heroes. And uh, it actually stacks up, so uh, you can use it several times. On, uh, and if you hit several heroes with it, you can just calculate how much strength the target is going to lose and how much you are going to gain. It's a very powerful skill. And um, you see, he keeps, keeps using it on Dendi to uh, give them an opening eventually if they want to go in on it. Hesitating a little bit to drop that Fisher right here with Lua as well as uh, Fear on his lane. Doesn't really want to go in, and of course, it is a hard lane to go on the Ukrainian one here. Uh, got some nice counter going, uh, counter engage as well as, as soon as the Shaker jumps in with that Fisher and uh, the follow up comes through, they're going to get a Nova, a stun, as well as a Shrapnel coming out on top of them, and that's going to be very, very hard to actually fight against. So, uh, they're being a little bit careful, uh, not to uh, overextend down here on bottom. Now Demon has got his core item up on the Scylla Bear up top. He's got the Orb of Venom, which is really powerful on that bear, allowing it to slow the target whenever it hits, and uh, in that way allowing it to get more consecutive hits on the target. So uh, we'll see how that comes to use for Demon. Oh, down on bottom, are they going to go? Ahura uh, dropping that stun on uh, Visage, but he's not really going to follow it through. And there comes the Tombstone from Fear. Looks like they're going to go Grave Chill on the back of Dendi as well. The nuke is there. First blood comes out for you as a nothing Dendi could do there. The raw power of these nukes. We had a Fissure, we had a Soul Assumption, and we had uh, Decay as well as Soul Rip coming out of Fear. And Dendi just pretty much exploded on that Sniper. And uh, with that first blood, we're going to drop our first save as well at 4 minutes and 20. And um, looks like the USA team is actually not done yet, as, as uh, the Shaker is hanging out the side, as you guys can see here. Looks like he wants to make a move behind the tower, going down for the Lich. Uh, but at, right now he's actually just going to pull the Creep Waver. There is the Stun, is there a follow-up? Stun, as well as Nova, is going to come on the back of Lua. He's taking a lot of damage, and he will actually die here to uh, Ahura. 
last hitting there together with the Art Style Nova and a couple of hits there as well. So uh, overextended there a little bit. And now Fear might actually be in trouble as well if there was mana on that Lich, but it is not. So uh, that is all that's going to come out of that. Fear will successfully escape Flask up and uh, reunite with Powernet down here preparing for the next attempt. Up top, Demon has got the boots on that bear as well. And now Chvost will be in very big trouble. This is going to be horrible for him, but he's actually leading on experience right now. Uh, of course, there are more creeps for Demon to kill than, uh, than Chvost right now, and uh, Demon is just patiently waiting for that Entangle to actually hit him, so uh, he might have a crack at killing him. Uh, but right now, the bear there, the Entangle, is it's going to give him a couple of additional hits. Might actually try to, try to go for it. If he gets another Entangle, can the bear reach him? The Sunstrike is there, and the Entangle comes out for Demon. What a timing for the US, and what a good entangle he got off there. Quite lucky, but it was all they needed for Bulba to hit that Sun Strike. As in the middle, Fisher comes in. What a good Fisher for Powernet. They're going to lock Thrall in place, blocking the rest of the path with the actual body of this cow. And uh, it's going to be bye bye Goblin as USA take the lead 3 to 1. Uh, some good movement is coming out right here. Of course, it comes at the price of Fear actually standing AFK at the bottom, uh, but might actually be well worth it getting rid of that Thrall. Uh, enforcing, uh, reinforcing the lane in middle to uh, to give Invoker a much easier time in here to really try to dominate his lane. Well, at the same time, we know we know that Demon is leading the top lane. He's getting some rockets spammed in his face though, so he's quite low and needs to be careful not to get hookshotted and killed by this level six clockwork. And it looks like Demon is aware of the threat. Yes. He's going to go out and farm the forest instead because he's afraid to stand on the lane. And uh, he's probably going to wait for that crow to be able to fly some uh, flask in for him or something of that sort. So uh, he will be able to actually stand on his lane once more. He's got rabid skill now as well. It's going to give himself as well as the spirit bear movement and attack speed. Um, that movement speed is going to be crucial for him to actually catch up to the clockwork with that spirit bear. Uh, he's given the boots to himself though. I'm not really sure why he would do that at this point. Um, and he's probably going to give them back to the bear just now when he goes on the lane to make sure that the bear can actually reach the clockwork. It doesn't look like it though. The rocket's going to fire off. Is there a hookshot from Chvost? Oh, he summon resummons the bear, so uh, Chvost doesn't really have the chance of going in. While well, in middle, Thrall gets off a high damage, high amount of damage on Bulba, and it just is enough. The last hit came around the corner there. The meteor is going to completely flunk, and now Goblin is going to retreat with his bottle, and at the same time, Chvost got that kill up top together with Ahura, but uh, it is going to cost uh, Ahura his life doing that tower dive, so it's going to be a one for one exchange up there. But in the middle, Goblin got his revenge on that Invoker, an important kill coming out of him. And now at bottom, we've got a lot of action coming out simultaneously right there. Here, this is what we like to see. Ah, oh, fear! It's going to drop that Tombstone as well, the, as well as the nuke. And there comes the Visage nuke, Sun Strike, almost on the back of Dendi, just missed by an inch. And uh, that's what's going to keep him alive. And now we might have a turnaround. Lua taking a lot of damage here, but look at all those zombies just pushing the Ukrainians back on their lane. And the nuke on Dendi. Down to 50 HP, but he will survive that, and Lua will retreat. He's out of mana, out of health. Uh, Fear will probably be able to stay on the lane, especially considering he's 25 gold away from his ring of health, and I'm expecting him to buy on, on that bottom lane. Uh, and up top, we've got Demon back on the lane again. He's putting a lot of pressure on Chvost, actually, just getting all these heroes off. Uh, heroes? Hits, rather. <laughs> getting all these hits off on Chvost, and now he's got that bear resummoned, so uh, he's ready to, uh, to kick some ass up there once more. We'll drop another save here at 8 minutes and 10. Score 4 to 3. No towers have fallen just yet, but we've got a lot of good action coming off in all three lanes, so this is what we like to see. No just uh, boring idle play, uh, but a lot of aggressiveness from both sides. Really want to make this count, want to make those kills. And uh, I'd be very surprised if we don't see a lot of kills coming out in this bottom lane soon enough, considering Lich is 5.5 and, and Sniper is almost 6. Those two ultimates together will deal a ton of damage to these bottom heroes, and it's going to be uh, hard for the USA boys to actually handle this lane, but we'll see how, how they're going to deal with it. Uh, Shaker roaming around the forest in smoke. Oh, he's going to get spotted by Ahura, and uh, Ahura could actually get something done here with the help of his allies. He's going to drop off a Terra and retreat. The allies are pretty far away, so a probably wise decision coming out of him. He's going to meet Bulba, though. Bulba finds Ahura. He's going to... Uh, what's he going to use? He's going to use the Cold Snap and a couple of hits here and dropping a perfect Meteor almost, dealing a lot of damage on, uh, on Ahura here. Ahura going to drop off a ward. Is there a Sun Strike? Ah, oh, that's a Visage from the side. That's going to be the death of Ahura. But at the same time, Bulba takes a lot of damage. He's going to get glimpsed back in. Beautiful play coming out of the Thrall here from uh, Goblin. And uh, Goblin's going to move down into the forest. The Fissure 
from um, Paranet was just not enough to actually keep uh, Bulbasaur alive right there. So it's going to be a one-for-one -one exchange again, as now Dirge wants to join the fun, wants to be a part of killing this troll, but it doesn't look like they can actually find him and get anything done. And now Lich is going to find Shaker here. This could be an opening for the Ukrainians if... Oh, he didn't actually find him. He was just inside the fog, so uh, nothing came out of that. But the Lich with that level 6, the Sniper with that level 6, and uh, what are we looking at on the final hero on the bottom lane? The Vengeful Spirit is level and he's moving towards top is a Hura and uh, now Dendi could be in trouble there's the Fisher from the side all the nukes are coming in on top of him but what a magic wand usage from Dendi it's gonna keep him alive and now the chain frost art style is gonna hit three heroes and there comes the assassinate from Dendi what a play from Ukraine turning that one around and the USA completely caught off guard there by that magic wand from Dendi and uh, that really paid off for the Ukrainians getting that one off. So uh, minus fear, and uh, we're going to have a 5-5 five to five score down on bottom right now as Artstar looks like he wants to go further ahead or perhaps just farm some zombies. And the action just won't take an end because now Khvost as well as Ahura up top have taken care of Demon Scylla Bear. And uh, well, a lot of action is certainly coming off around all the lanes here. Question is who's going to get up the big items first? All these kills are good, but who is actually getting the farm? We're looking at 42 CS for Khvost. We're looking at 34 for Goblin and 48 for Dendi. So a huge farm actually on the Sentinel side compared to the Scourge sitting on 24, 35, 41. So uh, higher farms on the Ukrainian side. We're ahead 6 to 5. So it is reasonable to say that the Ukrainians are leading this game right now. But it's not by a big margin. This could easily go either way during the next couple of fights with uh, all about who pulls off the better combo. And we'll see if the U USA guys can actually deal with uh, with Chavost. Looks like they're going to move some heroes up here. We've got Demon back up there with his Syllabelle already. And who's coming in for a gang? Looks like it's Lua. He's going to come in with that Visage. Needs to get the level 6 up on this one to get those familiars. The roaming vision, the roaming ganks he can come on, uh, he can make uh, make happen with that. It's going to be very important. As Demon is now uh, harassing Chavost. And now Visage is coming in from the side. Is Chavost... Uh, does he realize this? Looks like he's being very passive at least. He might be aware that something is happening. Or maybe he's just waiting for his friend Lich and actually for the courier. Uh, that's a vanguard on the back of Chavost. So now he's really tanky. And now Lua is going to be in trouble. Uh, Art style as well as Chavost have found him there. The cog is not going to reach but the hookshot is there. And uh, should be enough to bring down Lua indeed. He's going to die there dropping off that nuke on, um, on Chavost as his final, uh, final act before he dies. So 7-5 to five for Ukraine now, and looks like they're not done yet. They're going to go for Demon as well. Kovost tries to get in here. He doesn't have face boots though, so he can't really run through this creep wave. And now Demon is just turning on him with his bear, and uh, Artstyle is still there guarding him. But now Demon takes the fight to Artstyle. Rocket on top of him. There's an urn as well from Artstyle. He doesn't have another Nova just yet, but there it is. Artstyle takes down Demon. 8-5 to five for Ukraine, and the TP support for USA just comes in too late. They're going to find Kovost down here though, and oh, Invoker is there as well. This is going to be Minus Kvost, Mizio on the back of him, wow, all well, that damage coming up, and then look at those shakers beautifully blocking the path there, nice positioning coming out of power on it, nice little detail there, and that's going to give Visage his important level 6 to uh, finally get out and uh, get those familiars a little bit of food. Um, they're going to be hungry for Ukrainian blood, and uh, we'll see which blood they find to be the best. I think this sniper looks pretty tasty right now, at least he's filthy rich. Uh, sitting on 1450 gold with those 65 CS he's got. Uh, clearly the creep score leader of this game right now is Dendi, who is now aiming to push the bottom tier 1 tower together with his friend Ahura, who is also up to level 6 on Vengeful Spirit, so he'll have that nether swap. He's going to go down to the side shop and buy his boots in just a second, I think, while well, I miss a kill up top. Art Star showed up together with Goblin, got rid of fear. The chain frost is bouncing between the familiars and the uh, actual visage, but that's what's going to come off there. Caught them by surprise, I believe, as it looked like fear was... Uh, yeah, Fia is being undying, dying to these couple of heroes that must be a big combo they've pulled off. And it was indeed, both the ultimates came out. Lich as well as Thrall used their ultimates respectively to uh, to take out that uh, undying of Fia's. And uh, well worth those two ultimates always to get a kill like that. It's very important and it gives Artstyle the certainty that he can actually just stand up here in this lane and farm it. So not only do they get the kill, they also push two lanes sim simultaneously. We've got Demon showing up on bottom to defend this one. He's uh, going to struggle to do that because the shrapnel coming out of Dendi is just going to passively push it. Swap is going to come out on Demon. They're going to open up. We've got Sniper as well as Venge as well as Clockwork down here. They're going to get the tower on the back of Demon. Uh, uh, sorry, Dendi, but it might be trouble for Ahura. Ahura, really low, but he is going to escape that as now we've got Fear showing up. Uh, using his ultimate there, he needs to use the tombstone to get that slow off from the zombies. And uh, there it is, perfectly placed between the two Ukrainian heroes. Dendi taking a lot of damage. Fisher is there, 
Oh, Visage is there as well, and this time I don't think Dendi's going to escape. No way, he's going to take the fall this time round. And from the side comes Invoker, cold snap on the back of Chavaz. What a meteor coming out of Bulba, ripping this clockwork with a Vanguard. He took like a thousand damage from this meteor cold snap combo, and uh, Bulba really making it count with that Invoker. That meteor was absolutely flawlessly placed, and uh, Chavaz, no escape for him there. Got completely cleaved, and uh, this is going to be a tower bottom for the USA squad as well question is what price it comes at. They're, they're losing the middle as we speak. They're losing the top almost uh, as well as uh, Artstyle is now pushing this wave and he's got a creep wave coming with him as well but the tower bottom is indeed going to fall for the US uh, so it's going to be a one-to-one -one tower score for uh, half a second until uh, Goblin takes that mid one and uh, the Ukrainians are ahead on the tower stats as well by two to one and uh, I believe this calls for a save. It's been a little while since we had the last one. Actually it's been uh, like five to seven minutes so a good time to drop a save right, right now. It's just a uh, quarter of an hour played. We're up to 15 minutes, and uh, looks like the uh, USA boys are looking to uh, continue making their action. They've uh, tasted blood after those brilliant two kills they pulled off down on bottom. They want more. They've got an Invis rune on the back of uh, Power Nets Earthshaker, who's really looking to uh, lock somebody off with that uh, with that fissure. And uh, we'll see if he can find anyone. Actually, uh, up top, Demon, uh, sorry, Dendi and Art Style are going to get this top tower. Dendi getting so much gold this game. He's got two tower kills, and uh, I think he's got two hero kills as well. Right, he's got one and died twice, but still he's got Treads, Yasha, and sitting on about a thousand gold already as well. Uh, really, the the big gunner, no pun intended, of this game, uh, getting a lot of gold here, and uh, looks like he is going to find trouble though. Shaker is in Viz, Powernet is waiting for the option, there's the big Echo Slam, Cold Feet is on, uh, co sorry, Cold Snap on the back of Dendi, but what a mechanism and what a magic wand, and uh, Vost is going to actually take out Powernet with that clockwork, and uh, even though that Meteor was beautifully placed, it's still going to be horrible for US, they're going to lose two, they might even lose the three, if uh, Vost can uh, get in on this Bulbasaur, Invoker doesn't look like he can though, and uh, Fear is going to show up as well with his uh, Undying, so it's not going to happen, but what a timing. Again, Dendi using that magic wand perfectly, and then comes the mechanism in from Goblin uh, to heal him up by 250, and that's all that, all that Dendi needed to actually stay alive then. He's going to be happy he survived, TP down to bottom, and he's got a long way to farm until he actually hits a tower on the, on the USA side, so uh, Dendi will rack up at least a couple of thousand gold down here if he doesn't get touched uh, simply by holding his lane uh, with his Dwarven Sniper down here, so we'll see what comes out of that. As in middle thrall, gets a lot of damage out on Fear, but Fear is staying alive with that Soul Rip. He will keep healing up. He's going to use the Decay on the back of Artstar as well, but there's the Frost Nova that was needed to bring him down. Fisher from the side, Clockwork has caught Invoker as well. We're going to lose Invoker, or are we? Cold, uh, Ghost Walk is going to come out from Bulba, but we've got a hasted Clockwork looking for more kills. They have no Dust, they have no Sentry, but they have spotted power in it here, going to try to pursue him, not going to happen though, the tombstone is there, slowing him down with those zombies, and at the same time, we've got Ahura is going to take the fall here to Dendi, uh, sorry, to Demon, why am I mixing them up all the time, and uh, Demon looks like he wants more, he's going to go for the Clockwork Goblin, is there an entangle, oh, on style, very, very low, 20 HP, will get killed now by the Invoker, so minus our style, a dominating spree, is going to get ended by Bulba, and now we've got Goblin in trouble as well, he's hit by that Grave Chill of the Visage, but now he's going to turn on them, Kinetic Field as well as Static Storm is on top of them, but it looks like they're going to survive, Bob is going to be alright, and Lua takes that kill, so what a fight for the US, completely turned that one around after they lost one or two heroes there, I lost track of how many we actually lost in that exchange, but a lot of kills coming out there, and definitely USA coming out best of that fight. Vanguard is finished on Dirge, he really needs to get some farm up, I think Fear has died a couple of times, yeah he's died three times on that one, we've got 100 CS on Dendi already at 18 minutes, 67 on Goblin and 55 on the back of Chavost, and uh, similarly for the US we've got 50, 50, 40, so a huge farm advantage actually coming out on the Ukrainian side, I think when it all adds up they've got about 60 to 70 creep kills more than the USA squad has, so uh, looking to uh, be in a very very good position right now are the Ukrainians, ahead 12, 12 to 11, ahead by uh, two towers as well, 
and it uh, looks like they're, they're going to put a lot of pressure on the Americans by pushing uh, s uh, several lanes at the same time. Dendi has already started to push down on bottom. He's TPing up top to counter push this one and start a new one up there. And Shrapnel is just getting rid of the creep wave very, very quickly. Uh, his Dendi sniper looks like he's going for either Stygian or BKB on that one. As in the middle, engage on fear. He's taking a lot of damage, but he's actually outside the kinetic field. The Meteor is going to come down from Balba, dealing a lot of damage to a couple of heroes here. We've lost Ahura, and we might lose our style as well. The Chain Frost is bouncing between Zombies doing absolutely nothing, and USA getting two kills there with their powerful actual summoner strat, you could say. They've got the two Forged Spirits, they've got the Bear, they've got the Familiars, and they've got the Tombstones. If you're going to have a Chain Frost bouncing nicely between these heroes, you've either got to win the lottery or get rid of all these summons first. And uh, I don't think Artstyle is able to do either of those two things, so it uh, looks like a lot of damage coming out of, uh, of Thrall here, trying to hold that tower, or at least damage them quite a lot, and he will do so successfully. That Static Storm actually was pretty fucking cool. It looks really cool as they're all getting burned by the lightning. And now Clockwork's going to jump in. Chavost is going to completely fail it, though. He jumped uh, on the wrong target, and now he's going to get caught. Invoker as well as Visage are there. They're going to burst him out, and now Thrall gets the rebuttal on Lua there with, the, um, with his uh, lightning. Which I actually forgot what's called, that's not too good, but uh, yeah, we'll call it the lightning, uh, the lightning storm, it might be called or something of that sort. The chat will definitely let you guys know. I uh, can't remember what the name of that is, but the ultimate is the static storm, and uh, this other thing is some other lightning. A lot of lightning coming out this fast here, nevertheless. Um, up top, Undying is going to show up and try to stop Dendi. This is what I was talking about. The moment they, these guys are fighting in mid, Dendi is going to keep up that pushing. He's pushed the top tier 2 tower actually down to about two thirds of HP. Um, and uh, yeah. Small correction is 0-1 uh, to Swain. USA are leading by one game um, because they come from the winner's bracket advantage. Thirteen to fourteen, the score now. Though we've got Invoker finished his uh, face boots as well as uh, Django here. Um, Shaker looking uh, towards his blink dagger as well. Only six hundred gold away from that one, so a tower or two or a couple of assists for Powernet should be all he needs to actually get up his blink needs the level 11 to go with it as well to get really powerful with that echo slam but nevertheless powerful team fighting ability that the USA will have with that undying Silla Bear as well as Shaker and we should keep an eye out for Demon's Farm as well he's sitting on 3000 gold and that Silla Bear wants to get that radiance up of course as Silla Bear always wants to on his uh, Spirit Bear getting that radiance up the Spirit Bear is so hard to kill actually look at that HP 7 2700 sitting on 6 heavy armor as well and um and a stout shield to go with that, so uh, it's, it's actually hard to bring down this bear. And uh, that Radiance is uh, Demon's primary goal right now. He's just standing behind with his hero uh, while the bear is farming, but he's going to get caught off guard. Oh, what a burst coming out of Ukraine. All of them came in from the side, actually came in from two sides. We had Artstar, uh, Goblin, as well as Khvost jumping in there all at once using their ultimates. Three ultimates immediately placed on the back of Demon. They don't want him to farm up, and he, got, he was better, pretty much just blown away there. Uh, so the Ukrainians are going to try to capitalize on that by pushing the mid tier 2 while Denny is actually pushing the bottom tier 2. Might not want to do that though. Meteor on the back of him. He's going to run into the side. Wants to try and TP here. Can Dendi do it? Is there a stun? Is there a stun? Yep, there's the deafening blast coming out of Bulba. Beautifully played. He's going to be dominating with that. Is going to cost them the middle tier 2 tower though uh, that they had to chase away Dendi. So it uh, comes at a price, this kill for Bulba. Uh, but nevertheless, an important kill bringing down Dendi and uh, getting himself a lot of additional gold on that invoker. Uh, we'll see what he actually chooses to go for. He's got the Planeswalker's Cloak, so I uh, might be looking at a pipe, might be looking at just the hood, uh, might be looking at just the cloak. Um, see if he's going to turn that into anything. He's going to go for something along the lines of a Ginsu Scythe, maybe a Four Staff, maybe a BKB, or an Aghanim Scepter. He's got the Ogre Axe now, at least, on the back of that Invoker, and uh, we'll see what will be the item of his choice. Uh, Powernet farming off in middle. He's need, he needs that 100 gold for the Blink, looks like. Demon is going to let him have it. Um, up to level 10 as well on that Earthshaker, so that should give him his Aftershock level 4, which he just skilled then, um, making his all of his spells do the maximal stun duration they can actually get at this point. And um, the level 11 on Echo Slam basically just gives more damage, so in terms of crowd control, Shaker is at his pinnacle right now. He cannot get more stun than this from his abilities, uh, will only get more damage now per level, and uh, well, that is certainly something that should be considered important as well as now the blink dagger is up and uh, he will be a force in these team fights look like looks like the USA are gonna try to get Roshan they've got Alacrity on the back of Invoker look at that plus damage he's gonna deal a ton of damage with that Alacrity on and uh, they're gonna be able to quickly take down this one the Ukrainians are completely unaware of what's going on they've got two heroes top two heroes mid and one guy in the forest so uh, this is a free Roshan coming out of the US and uh, we'll see who actually takes the Aegis I'm expecting it to come out in the Scylla Bear uh, who's aiming to get that Radiance up 
Uh, we'll have it in 200 gold, he'll have the relic, and uh, then go for the Radiance immediately after. And uh, I dare say when the USA have that Radiance, they are in a big advantage in the team fights, and they're going to try to push it through immediately once they've got that, because they know that this guy, Dendi, will get, become a too f big force later on, and uh, they have to end the game while they can, because this sniper is going to be fat. He's already got 150 CS at 23 minutes, uh, completely ridiculous lead. The secondary CS in the, in the game is on his own team.